house needs haunting, just call Rent a Ghost. We've got spooks and ghouls and freaks and fools at Rent a Ghost. Hear the phantom of the opera sing a haunting melody. Remember what you see is not a mystery, but Rent a Ghost. the way Mrs. Perkins keeps bursting into song. She seems to do it at the drop of a hat. I, I think that Mrs. Neighbor's nerves are bad. She is historical. Eh? Hey? Oh, oh hysterical. hysterical. Yes, that as well. Yes, and it's all our fault. Mr. Claypole, I'm putting you back on good deed duty at the Perkins house. I still feel very guilty about the distress we caused them, and if you hear of anything we can do for them, I want to know about it. Oh, I see. <laughs> Open up that golden gate, California, here I come. Yes, very well, Dr. Newman. I'll expect you at tea time tomorrow, then. Yes, goodbye. I do wish that psychiatrist would make up his mind whether or not he's going to give the Meekers treatment. But if he comes here to watch them, he spends most of his time observing us. I know one thing. One of these days, the Meekers are liable to go berserk. We don't want a psychiatrist. What we want is a guard dog. Oh, what a good idea. And the fiercer, the better. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sneaker, I have summoned a boxer. Oh, good. Is it a he or a she? Oh, naturally, he is a male. Surely there are no female boxers. Of course there are, silly. His mother must have been a boxer. Now, look, I haven't got time to go to the shed myself. You'd better give him something to eat right away. Very well. What shall I give him? Let me eat out of here! Of course boxers eat bones, you ignoramus. Now, you better make him take a little sleep until I arrange for him to be fed. Ooh, I can't wait to see Mr Perkins' face when he sees what we've got for him. <laughs> 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 Miss Popov says you've got a boxer dog for the Perkins. What's he like, Ethel? It's very quiet. Oh, he's still asleep. I haven't had a chance to see him yet. I must get these clothes in before it rains. Oh, here she goes! <gasps> Oh, oh! Ah! Mr. Speaker, I gather there was something you wanted to show me. Though I can't think why you were so mysterious on the phone this morning. Oh, I wanted it to be a surprise, Mr. Perkins. If you look inside the shed, you'll see something you've been wanting. <laughs> it looks like a boxer. It is a boxer. We hope you and your wife will like him. What? We want you to take him home with you, Mr. Perkins. But I don't even know him. Oh, I'm sure he'll be friendly once he's used to being near you. You could let him sleep at the foot of your bed. Oh, no, they don't want to spoil him. You want him properly trained, Mr. Perkins. I know nothing whatever about training boxers, and I don't intend to try. Oh, it's not very difficult. It's just a matter of taking him for walks and teaching him to sit on the pavement before crossing the road. And a sit. Walkies. Sort of thing. All right, that, that's enough. You've got a great length to play your idiotic practical joke. I only hope you and your friend in there have a good laugh. Friend? Laugh? What's going on, Ethel? Oh. Oh. Ah! Mr. Claypole! Ah! Yes, Green. <gasps> Quick, get somebody to wedge against the door before he knocks it down. Quick, get a plan! Go to the office, Mr. Claypole. Now, you're quite sure you know what you have to do. Yes, I am to ring the Perkins doorbell and pretend to be a tramp selling Lucky Charms. Yes, but make it convincing. Tell him you're broke. Ask for the price of a beef butty. That's two pieces of bread with some beef in between them. Oh, very well. Uh, Mr. Claypole, for heaven's sake, try and sound more like a tramp. Throw in a few modern expressions like holy mackerel, stone the crows and coal of a duck. That sort of thing. Was rather good. I'll see you later. Yes. <laughs> Greetings! Oh, and holy mackerel to you. I am a tramp. In need of repair. In need of repair? Yes, I am broke. Can you spare the price of a cow butty? I beg your pardon? That is, two slices of bread with a cow in between. In return, I will give you this lucky charm. Oh, here's 10p, my good man. I don't want your lucky charms, thank you. Cool, be affectionate to a duck. That is most generous. But I cannot accept something for nothing. Please. Oh, well. Oh, it's quite pretty. Oh, all right, I'll, I'll give you 20p, then. <laughs> you have rewarded me beyond my wildest dreams. Cool. Be affectionate to a duck. Throw stones at the crows. That sort of thing. <laughs> Bye. 
perhaps I may return someday and sell you some more lucky charms. Why, oh, I don't think I want any more. I mean, you don't want to come here on a wild goose chase. Indeed, I do not. I love ducks, hate crows, revere holy mackerel, but I have no interest in geese. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> Tis done. Henceforth, the magic talisman will grant the Perkins every wish exactly as they speak it. And I, I keep meaning to fix this picture. If, if I don't do it soon, it's going to fall down. Oh, not now, Arthur. I think I've got a headache coming. Oh, well, all right. If you want to risk breaking the picture, on your head be it. Oh, Arthur! Oh, it's big enough to eat a small whale. Or a large sprat. Ah, voila! <laughs> I shall now retire to think of a way to reverse the growing spell. Oh, you might have transported it to the shed. I have to carry it there myself. Come on, Jaws. Oh, so slippery. It's difficult to get a hold of grip. Oh. Wonder if it's fine enough to do a bit of weeding. Rose! Rose! Rose is... It's a big fish looking over the garden fence. Arthur, I'm in no mood for jokes at this time of the morning. Oh, there you are. What the devil do you think you're doing? You look ridiculous. I don't need what you that? to point that out. I feel ridiculous. I know. Ye gods! Now, Mika's talking to the fish, and the fish is answering him. Oh, this is ridiculous. It's another one of their crazy practical jokes, and I almost fell for it. Arthur? There's a big lump coming up on my head with that picture fell on it. Oh, I think I'd better ring my doctor. Mm. Oh, no. Oh, the telephone's out of order. Oh, dear. Well, if you really want to ring him, you'll have to do it from the nut house next door. Oh, Arthur, I couldn't. I'm sure. When I tell that psychiatrist what those fruitcakes have been up to, he'll agree to their treatment. Why not ask him to look at the swelling on your head? After all, he, he is a doctor. Oh, what a good idea, Arthur. Why didn't I think of that? Arthur, please don't bring those geraniums in here. You know I can't stand the musky smell. Yes, yes, I know, but I'm, I'm not very happy about this one. I want to keep an eye on it. Please, Rose. Oh, all right. Look, will you answer the doorbell? Just this once. Perhaps I'll get used to it. Let's hope it grows on me. Mr. Perkins, I see you've stopped growing the, um... Uh, oh, that, yes, 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 yes. My wife didn't like it, so I shaved it off. She's in here. I'm glad you didn't eat it. Oh, hello, Dr. Newman. Oh, have I got some things to tell you about the me, because you'd never believe. But before we go into that, I wonder if you'd mind having a look at this thing on my head. Can you see it? Yes, I can see it. Uh, how long have you had it? Oh, since this morning. I see. And how did you get it? Well, from the picture. From the picture? Yes, it fell on my head and then this thing came up. I, I've been putting iodine on it, but it doesn't seem to have done much good. No, it wouldn't. Do you think a poultice would be better? I would have thought a little artificial manure might have been more effective. <laughs> oh, no, seriously, do you think it might become infected? Oh, I shouldn't think so. Might get a touch of green fly, that's all. Doctor, are you going to give me treatment or not? Oh, yes, yes, I'll give you treatment, Mrs. Perkins. Uh, I see the very thing here. This will do the trick. Here we are. There. That'll keep the caterpillars away. Look, there's no need to be sarcastic. I realise you think I'm making a lot of fuss over nothing, but there's no need to make fun of me. I assure you, Mrs. Perkins, I am treating your case very seriously indeed. In fact, my advice for you is to put your feet up for the rest of the day and I'll call back again tomorrow. That's remarkable. That's quite unique. Yes, but just a moment. Just a moment, Dr. Newman. You have to discuss the meat. Oh, really? Behavior. Apple, it's all, apple, oh, it's all right. Oh, oh, Please stop all that screaming and shouting. Aren't we ever going to have any peace here? Well, there's no need to shout, and we're sorry we didn't mean to disturb you. you you've done nothing else ever since you moved in here. And, and if you're so anxious not to disturb us, there's just one thing I wish you would do. Well, Go away. Hop it. At your party, be a smarty and higher. Rent a ghost if you want a fight like the spooky heights with rent a ghost you can let our spirits move you and for fun play ghost men's luck because we in the shop we hope your knees will love that's rent a ghost 
let me say the most terrific simple ghost not scientific merely supernatural ghouls of the day heavy footsteps in your attic means a spectre telepathic is descending just to spirit you away hey we are extraordinary fellas here at rented ghost to be another you regular come to rented ghost for a biography we ghost writers i'm not forgetting a ghost script An apparition quick from deep inside a crypt Ring rent to ghost An apparition quick from deep inside a crypt Ring rent to ghost